Now, it's generally conceded that the key to the gospel of John is John 20, 30, 31. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Now, I concur that that is the key to this gospel, but I'd like to put right along by the side of it verse 28, because it gives this tremendous movement of the Son of God and the fact that God became a man and the Word was made flesh. Listen to it. I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And that's a statement. There's never been a human being on this earth that could make that statement except the Lord Jesus Christ. And this gospel widens it out and makes this bigger than Bethlehem. And it reaches back into eternity past and moves into eternity in the future. And it just speaks of those few moments he spent on this little earth. Now, verse 29, his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. And this ought to be very plain, by the way, for the church today, to understand that the Lord Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. He makes that tremendous claim here in verse 28. And in verse 30, he says, Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. You need not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. You see, these men now are being brought into the place, not only of just faith, but of knowledge that is based upon facts and that now they are convinced. There's a great conviction that's coming over them. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Now listen, though. Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own. And that hour came. These very men that one of them said he had laid down his life for him, and I think all... Ten of the others would have said that also, but they didn't. They were scattered. And he says, you'll leave me alone, and yet I'm not alone because the Father is with me. And that's one of the great mysteries. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That's a great truth, but it's also true that when he's on the cross, he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's a quotation from the 22nd Psalm, and the explanation given is, because thou art holy. When he was made sin for us, friends, there was a rent in the Godhead as well as a rent in the veil. But God was in all of this reconciling the world to itself. 